In this video, I'll provide a brief overview of how to conduct a kinetics experiment involving the oxidation of iodide to iodine using hydrogen peroxide. The reference to where this procedure came from is given. Looking at the reaction equation and the rate equation, you can see that the rate of the reaction is a function of hydrogen ion concentration as well as iodide and peroxide. And so to eliminate the variation due to hydrogen ion, all reactions are run at a constant pH of 2. Temperature also affects reaction rates, and so in the first part of this experiment, all reactions are run at constant room temperature. In the second part of this experiment, well, we run the reactions in ice water and using the two temperatures and the data we'll be able to calculate the activation energy using the Arrhenius equation. In part A the reaction rate with respect to iodide is determined by conducting several experiments in which the concentration of peroxide is kept constant. This is the graph on the left and iodide concentration is increased. And then a plot of log of the rate of peroxide decomposition versus the log of the concentration of iodide is quite linear. R squared is 1 and its slope is 0.93, essentially 1, indicating a first order relationship with respect to iodide concentration. Then in several more experiments the concentration of iodide was kept constant and concentration of peroxide was varied. The graph on the right shows the plot of the log of the rate of decrease of peroxide in solution versus the log of the peroxide concentration is also quite linear. R squared is 1 and a slope of 1 again indicating a first order relationship between reaction rate and the concentration of iodide. And so the reaction then appears to be second order overall. Here's the setup. I won't give detail in the video regarding the quantities of reagents to add. That's given clearly in the procedure. So in this picture you see I have a 100 mil beaker and I prefer it to a 150 because it gives a higher um, a greater height of liquid in the beaker. I've weighed in the required quantity of water. I've added the correct volumes of starch and hydrochloric acid and potassium iodide. And I've got it covered with a watch glass and mixing it at, mix that at a healthy rate, about 350 RPM with a large stir bar. And that's rapid enough to give good mixing while well, I combine the reagents but not to draw a vortex. Recall that air contains oxygen and oxygen in acidic solution will certainly oxidize iodide to iodine and that would create an error so I, I want to avoid ingression of air. I'm about to add hydrogen peroxide from the auto pipette. You can use a standard pipette and I would suggest if you do so just blow it in quickly and carefully with a squeeze bulb. I believe it's two mils in this case. After the addition of peroxide, I immediately start the timer and then watch and wait for the time of appearance of the blue starch iodine complex. As is obvious in this photograph, I'm running these reactions at room temperature. Let's take a look at the video of the reaction. So here's the reaction. I've added all my reagents except hydrogen peroxide, just removed the watch glass. Now I'm adding the hydrogen peroxide, immediately cover it, notice it's stirring at 350 RPM. After about 5 seconds I decrease the stir rate down to about 60 RPM, so it's just ticking over. No oxygen invited into the solution. And then I sit and watch and wait carefully for the appearance of the blue starch iodine complex. It appears quite suddenly. There it is, 24 seconds, so 
You want to be watching carefully or you'll miss it. That's pretty much it. In order to determine the activation energy of this reaction, we need to repeat one of the experiments at low temperature. So I have all of the reagents, including the water, uh, in an ice bath. And notice I have a thermometer to record the temperature. We need the temperature and ensure that it's suggested below 10 degrees Celsius. Notice to carry out the reaction, I have the 100 mil beaker sitting in a larger beaker of ice water to keep the temperature low. So that's really all there is to running this experiment. I have to give credit to the authors of this. I think it's absolutely brilliant how they use thiosulfate to keep the concentration of iodide constant during the reaction and generate such sharp and reproducible endpoints. So all the other information you need to run this experiment is given in the procedure, so read it carefully and give it your best. Cheers.